This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Hi, I'm Louise Aronson uh, from the University of California, San Francisco, and I'm here today to talk about falls in older adults. And I'm really excited to talk about this topic, not because it's exciting that older adults fall, but because this is a really common problem, and it's one that we can do a whole lot about, but many people don't know what can be done. So I have tried to pull together a presentation today that will take anyone through what you need to know about falls and what you can do to keep older adults from falling whether you are an older adult or are a family member or are someone who cares for older adults uh, professionally or personally. So I am with the Division of Geriatrics at the University of California, San Francisco, and I'm going to start just by telling you what geriatrics is because not everybody is familiar with the term. In fact, some colleagues of mine at, uh, in Baltimore just did a study, and one person thought maybe a geriatrician was a person who scooped Ben and Jerry's ice cream because geriatrics and Jerry. Uh, I actually love ice cream, and I wish I were paid to scoop it or eat it, but I'm not. Uh, what I am is a doctor who has specialized first in the care of adults and then specialized even further in the care of older adults. So just as a pediatrician cares for children and young adults up through about age 20, a geriatrician specializes in the care of older adults and their families to keep them safe, safe healthy, and independent uh, in their older years. So today we're going to talk about falls. Starting, and you can see here there's a path of falls. We're going to start learning about falls, then we're going to learn how to take care of falls, and the goal will really be to prevent falls. Now, we can't prevent all falls, but we can certainly decrease falls so that people who are falling fall less, and more importantly, so that they fall without sustaining serious injuries. The goal always uh, for geriatrics is to keep people safe, safe healthy, and independent. So falls, I want to start by asking you to close your eyes and we're going to count to 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, almost there, thirteen, fourteen and 15. And I had you do that because every 15 seconds an older American is seen in an emergency department in the United States because of a fall. Every 15 seconds in that short time we were counting. And every 29 minutes an older American dies because of a fall. So by the time I finish this talk, two older Americans will have died, one at the start and one at the end of the talk. So this is a really, really important public health and personal health issue. In this talk, I'm going to answer four questions. One is, what's a fall? You may think you already know, and probably you do, but there is technically a definition and a distinction that we make medically. Why learn about them? Well, hopefully their, their frequency and how many people die from them are, are already convincing, but there are some other reasons. We'll talk about who's at risk, and most importantly, we'll talk about what you can do to prevent falls or lessen injuries from falls. So the definition of a fall is unintentionally ending up on the ground or other lower surface. So on the ground, that's kind of obvious. But another lower surface can be, let's say you stand up from a chair or the bed, and then you fall back onto it. You have technically fallen, even though you're not on the ground. That's a fall. Equally important is what falls aren't. So they're different from fainting. Medically, what causes a fall and what causes you to faint are different, and the workup is different. So it's really important to make that distinction. It's also not because you had a sudden illness. If you have a heart attack or stroke, you don't really want me thinking about falling. You want me taking care of your heart attack or stroke. 
We also don't count ones that are acts of man or acts of nature. So if you end up on the ground because a car hit you or because there was an earthquake, that's a little different from if you were just walking and fell. So that's what falls are, unintentionally ending up on the ground. Why learn about falls in older adults? Well, they're really common. So one in three adults over age 65 falls each year. One in three, these are huge statistics. We often talk about other things that are far less common. And over age 80, one in two, so fully half of older adults over age 80 fall each year. This is a really common problem. Falls are also dangerous. They're the fifth leading cause of death for people over age 65. We hear all the time about heart attacks and strokes and cancer, and we should. But what I'd like to convince you of today is that we should also hear more about falls, because the list of things from which we will all die is many hundreds or thousands of items long, and this one is number five. It's terribly important. The other thing is that 10% of falls lead to a major injury. Fractures are really common, more common in whites than in people of other ethnic groups, more common in women than men. Brain trauma is more common in men and in African Americans, but obviously either way, you don't want a fracture, you don't want brain trauma. You particularly don't want a hip fracture because that increases your risk of disability, ending up in a nursing home and dying. And falls can lead to hospitalization, which pretty much no one wants to end up in the hospital if they don't have to. The third reason to think about falls is that they take away what matters most to people. This is something we focus on a lot in geriatrics, which is about people's quality of life, their independence, what they can do for themselves, and how much they're able to enjoy their life and health. So 60% of fallers will have a moderate decrease in their social and physical activity. So what they can do during the day, what they do for pleasure, what they do to get through the day, 60%. And 15% will seriously restrict their activities basically compromising every part of their life. There's also a three to tenfold increased risk of ending up in a nursing home. So on the low end are people who are sort of newer follow fallers and people who fall frequently have a tenfold risk of ending up in a nursing home. And we know from studies across the globe that many people would rather die than end up in a nursing home and that it's one of the things people fear most. So this is a really bad adverse consequence that takes away what people value most in their lives. So we need to help them to have this not happen. All right, so now we're moving along through our path. We've talked about what is a fall and why do they matter, why learn about them. And now we're gonna talk about who's at risk for falls, starting with the people who are at the highest risk. People who have fallen before are more likely to fall again. This sort of stands to reason. If you're a person who falls, you're a person who falls, but that also means you're a person to whom we should be paying attention to try and decrease your risk, because chances are you may fall again. People who have trouble with strength, gait, or balance. This can be because you were sick for a while and lost some strength. It can be from arthritis or a host of other diseases. Uh, balance problems are also something we don't always think about. I tend to think about it for gymnastics, but it turns out it matters to all of us and all the more so as we grow older. And then certain medications dramatically increase the risk for falls, and I'll come back to what those are. So risk factors for falls generally. The ones we just saw, abnormal balance, low muscle strength, trouble walking, that makes sense. If you're less certain walking or, or less steady walking, you're more likely to fall. And then functional limitations. By this we mean your ability to take care of yourself. So can you clean your house? Can you get to the grocery store? Can you take care of yourself and, and take a shower? People who have more limitations in those basic activities are more likely to fall. There are also some things you can't really control. So if you're over age 80, you know, we can't change that. Um, and very thin people could try and put on weight, but there are reasons people are thin. So these are harder to control, but they're also risk factors. Um, sometimes uh, being female is also seen as a risk factor for falls. Medications. So now we're getting into an area where we can start to make some changes, uh, which is exciting. So for medications of any kind, this can include over-the-counter, prescribed medications, herbal medications, uh, medications from your doctor, four or more increases your risk of falls. 
Some kinds increase your risk more than others. So sleeping pills of any kind, whether you get them at your corner drugstore or they're prescribed by a clinician, really increase your risk for falls. They also somewhat increase your risk for confusion. So there are lots of downsides. On the other hand, not sleeping is horrible. So I want to acknowledge that. Luckily, one of the things that's really helpful for falls, exercise can also help for sleep, as can all kinds of other things that you can do that don't include taking a pill. The other categories of medications that can make people fall are ones that affect the brain. Uh, so that tends to affect balance and other things and increase the risk for falls, antidepressants and antipsychotics. Now with antidepressants, it's a little bit of a tough choice because being, depression, de being depressed impacts everything and actually being depressed is a risk factor for falls. So I'm by no means saying don't take an antidepressant, but it's something to think about and as the depression gets better, it may be worth stopping the medication. Antipsychotics are another issue. If somebody is actively hallucinating or having delusions, then you need to control those symptoms because they're very dis di distressing and frightening and sometimes dangerous. But really often, older people, particularly people over age 80, will get started on antipsychotics uh, for reasons where the indication isn't so good, where we don't know that it really helps. It tends to keep them quiet when really figuring out what the need was that was making them uh, more vocal that led to the prescription might be more helpful. So antipsychotics are really a drug to question unless the person's having hallucinations or delusions. And then the fourth category are medical issues. So people who have trouble seeing are more likely to fall. This makes sense if you can't see where you're going. Also people with diabetes, and this may in part be because they're ill and in part because the nerves are working less well to the feet. People who are dizzy, people who have depression, and people who have dementia are at much increased risk. Uh, incontinence also leads to risk for falls, and this may be because people are rushing to the bathroom. Uh, and you should know that, like falls, incontinence is a topic that often isn't addressed as much as it could be and that has lots of good treatments. So better to get treatment than to rush to the bathroom and risk a fall. Arthritis and pain can also lead to falls, probably because they impact your strength and your walking. So a variety of risk factors, many of which we can do things to improve. So the bad news is the more risk factors a person has, the higher their risk for falling. You can see here on this graph, it's, uh, sometimes graphs are a little confusing, so I'm just going to say at the very top on, let me use this pointer, up here is 100% risk. So this means in a year, a person has 100% chance of falling. They will fall. And down here means they won't fall in the year. So people who have no risk factors have a really low chance of falling in the course of a year, less than 10%. And people who have four or more of those risk factors I just discussed have a 78% chance of falling. That means four in five of them will fall in the course of a year. The good news is that if you decrease risk factors, so if you take someone from having four risk factors and you can get rid of two by maybe stopping a medicine and starting some exercise, you can decrease their risk to 30% from nearly 80%. So we can make a difference. Uh, and I think we're gonna look at how right now. So moving along our path to the last and most important step, what can you do about falling? There are a host of things, and we'll go over them one at a time. First and most important is exercise. This can be challenging for people who've never exercised before, and the great news is that you can start exercising at any age, you can do so safely, and it can build your strength, improve your balance, and incre increase your independence. Um, you can see here on top there are some people doing Tai Chi. There is a lot of evidence that Tai Chi helps with falls, and all kinds of people can do this. Uh, my mother, who turns 80 this year, is learning Tai Chi, uh, so this shows people who are uh, Chinese Americans, but you don't need to be a Chinese American to do Tai Chi and to benefit from it. You can also do whatever you've always enjoyed. If you enjoy walking, walk. There are many different forms of exercise, and the key thing is finding one that you will do and that you can do safely, and hopefully that you'll enjoy. It should improve your strength, it should improve your endurance, and then really some exercise that works on balance is very important for preventing falls. 
medication review. I touched on this before, but going over medications and making sure they're all really needed is important. And you might think, why would the doctor be giving me something I don't need? Well, sometimes people go in the hospital and a medication gets started that isn't needed, but maybe everybody hasn't communicated as well as they might, and it gets continued, so that might be stopped. Sometimes also medications are helpful for a period of time, then no longer needed. And also, as people get to be very old, we don't actually know which medicines help them. So if you look at studies of medications, usually who is being studied are more middle-aged people. So if somebody is 85 or 90, even if there are really good studies arguing for that medication, we don't actually know that it helps more than harms that person. Uh, there's, there's sort of some great examples of how this has happened historically. At the beginning, when we used to do studies of medications, they said, well, you know, men and women are different, so we're not going to study the women because they're kind of different. We'll, we'll just do the studies on the men. And then they applied it to women, and they found that actually women reacted differently because they were different. And then this happened with whites and non-whites, and it continues to happen with older patients who are excluded from most trials. So there may be really good indications for a particular medication if you're 60, but we don't know that it's still helping you if you're 85. So really going through the medications and seeing if any can be eliminated, or even just doing a trial off it. If it turns out you need it, it's very easy to restart most medications. Next is home safety. This is particularly important for people who have fallen more than once, and particularly if they're falling at home. You can see here there are a bunch of uh, electrical cords. So the there are many things you can do to make the home more safe. Some are really basic. So if there are cords or rugs that are on the ground that are potential places where a person can trip, really good to move the cords off to the side by the wall, to pick up any throw rugs, to just have it be a smooth and even surface. Lighting is really important. We talked about low vision being a problem. Well, having poor light is the same as having low vision. So you really want to make sure there's good lighting. Grab rails um, in the bathroom in particular, so when people are using the toilet, the shower, the bath, there's somewhere to hold on to. That makes a big difference, and rails and stairs uh, make a difference. There are lists of how to make a home safe that I will mention later in this talk, but this is especially important for people who are falling often and falling at home. Vitamin D. So this is a vitamin you can get over the counter. We don't all need to take it. There's been lots of press about it lately. But it does look like if people have low levels, and this is more true if people are going out less often than they were previously, so not getting any sunlight, which helps us make vitamin D, then replacing the vitamin D will decrease the risk for falls. And getting a good checkup. So we've talked about things like vision. So probably older adults should have their vision checked every year or two because low vision is often correctable and that will decrease the risk of falls. This is a blood pressure cuff, a little hard to tell, but people often have their blood pressure taken, but there's something we like to call the other blood pressure, which is that your blood pressure may be just fine when you're sitting down, but you stand up and it falls. And this means that sometimes when you stand up you feel lightheaded or dizzy, and that clearly increases your risk of falls. So having your other blood pressure checked, your orthostatic blood pressure, very important. Checking joints and muscle. Muscles, because we know arthritis and pain lead to weakness and risk for falls. Checking the brain, so is the person depressed? Do we need to treat that? Do we need to not treat it if they're no longer depressed? Is there any cognitive dysfunction? Because how we treat a fall uh, varies a bit depending on how well the person's brain is working. Similarly for the heart, the heart can be related to falls and needs to be examined. And last but not least, the feet. So having good, safe shoes makes a huge difference. Also things like having your toenails cut so they're not too long, or having any painful foot deformities treated so that it's easier to take a step that's comfortable and gets you safely where you want to go. And then physical therapy is very important, particularly for people who are falling often or who are weak or who need help uh, making their home safe. There are any number of indications, but physical therapists can help figure out how you can exercise safely. They can help you work on balance, and they can help you make your home a safer place. Okay, so how do we put all this together? Well, let's start by looking at someone who's had their first fall. I'm going to assume that this was a first fall, there was no major injury, so they're basically in the same decent health they were in before. 
but they're a little older and they'd really like not to fall again, not to have that serious injury, not to have to start restricting their life because they've fallen. And a lot of people have a very natural instinct to restrict. Uh-oh, I fell, so I better not go outside again, or I'm not gonna go visit my grandchildren. Well, actually, the less you do, the weaker you become, and the higher your risk for falls. So it's a little counterintuitive, but falling means you need to get more active, not less. Of course, you have to do that safely. So we wanna be thinking in this person who's had one fall, would rather not have any more, um, and wasn't badly injured, uh, what we need to do to prevent to manage risk. So staying active, absolutely critical. Maybe the person is already doing some walking, but they actually need to add some weight training uh, or some balance exercises. So sometimes physical therapy can be helpful here, or sometimes just getting some advice and starting to do some exercises. Again, I'll show you some resources in a bit that, that can help. Um, does vision need to be checked? When, did, when was the last time the person went to the eye doctor? Check the other blood pressure. Um, and this can be related to a new medication because there are medications that will lower that blood pressure and that will make the person more likely to fall. So some really basic things can be done to decrease the risk, but hopefully I've made the point that the really key thing is the exercise and staying active. Then there are people who have fallen more than once. Maybe they've had an injurious fall, maybe they're falling regularly. This is a little bit different, although some of the exact same principles hold. When someone's falling often, I think we get to the point, and this is something we, we address really often in geriatrics, which is what matters most to the person. So family will sometimes say, well, you know, n now they can't go to the senior center, or now you can't volunteer, or now you can't come over and play with the grandchildren because it's too unsafe. Well, I think this is a conversation we all need to have together. How can we make that more safe? And what does the person value most? So sometimes people really want their independence and they want to continue their social lives. That's great. That's what makes all our lives worthwhile. And so you have to understand the risks increase the safety as much as possible, but if the person values their independence first and foremost, then we need to support that and realize it might mean that there will be more falls, but we're gonna try and make them non-injurious if possible. It's also balancing treating diseases versus the number of medications, um, which we discussed a little bit earlier. So do you still need all the medications you're currently on? And then thinking about using a cane or a walker versus falling down. So it is the very rare person who is excited to be given a cane or a walker, and many people will flat out refuse them. One of the most common reasons for refusing it is that people will think that they look vulnerable. Well, actually, if you've seen someone who needs a cane or walker walking without one, and then you've seen them walking with it, they actually look less vulnerable with the device because it makes them walk more more quickly and usually more safely and strongly. So figuring out which thing you need, uh, which one is least invasive and disruptive to your life is really important, but considering using that device because it might mean the difference between going out and falling down or going out and really safely getting to do what you wanna do. Then there's something called a multifactorial intervention. And what that means is just somebody, usually a team of people, because geriatrics is very much a team sport where you would have a physical therapist and a nurse and a physician and a social worker and an occupational therapist and, and whoever else, looking at all the reasons you might be falling and trying to individualize the treatment for that and thinking about how we can minimize the risk of this frequent fallers falls. Um, this usually includes physical therapy, so if someone's falling often, just adding some exercise from someone like me who isn't a specialist in that usually isn't good enough, so a physical therapy consultation really matters. Uh, fall proofing the home, very important at this point. Vitamin D, so often people who are falling frequently are deficient. The, the, your doctor or nurse can do a blood test to see if you are, and if you are, then replace the vitamin D. And then the checkup that we talked about before, checking the eyes, the feet, the heart, the brain and the nervous system. 
So there are resources that um, are easily available. Um, if you search uh, on the computer or have someone who can do this for you, the Centers for Disease Control, or CDC, has information on falls, so you can just put CDC and falls. Similarly, the National Institutes for Health, or NIH, has a senior health initiative that has information about falls, and the National Council on Aging, or NCOA, has information on falls. These are things from what you can do, which sorts of exercises, um, where you can seek resources in your area, how to make your home safe. So lots of good resources for people are available. So finally we come to our goals, which ideally are that no one falls. But I can't really promise that based on this. What I can say is that we know that we can decrease the number of falls that people have, and we can in many cases make them less uh, likely to hurt themselves badly. So I think the goal is that people fall less and that they fall with no serious injuries. Not that we can, again, promise that, but we can have fewer serious injuries by doing these simple things so that people can be safe, healthy, and independent in their old age. And with that, I'll finish. Thank you very much.